You want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? You can't handle the truth! Well, we're giving you the Michigan Sports Truth, the show that reveals facts, truth, research, and statistics, and never messes around. We lay down the entire truth about everything regarding your Detroit and Michigan sports teams, no matter if it's good or bad. No junk, no entertainment, no homerism, no coddling, no pop culture, no opinions, no shilling, and no fluff. Head over to our website at michigansportstruth.com, follow us on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth, and like our Facebook page, The Michigan Sports Truth. The hosts of the Michigan Sports Truth podcast do not take any suggestions or criticism from any member of its audience on how it should be run. It is up to the host to decide what they want to cover. They also do not intend to be any amount of popular in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Additionally, the views of the audience, right or wrong, do not reflect the actual truth revealed on this program. And welcome to the post game edition for May 4th, 2018. I'm Taylor Phillips, along with Lewis Tenor. Follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips. Man, that, that loss was needed as well. Francisco Liriano pitches seven shutout innings, and then Ron Garbage Fire, that old oaf manager, not even, not even close to being Jim Leland, an obese Jim Leland, Brings in the wrong relief pitchers. Daniel Stumpf, Joe Jimenez. Jacoby Jones hits a two-run double in between those moments. And then... Stump and Jimenez. Um, blow the 2 nothing lead and fall behind. Fall behind. 4-2. to I mean, really, that, that, that's, uh, if you ask me, I, I can, um, that's uh, pretty typical. for this bullpen here. So, I guess... I, I guess that loss helped the Royals. It helped the Tigers' tanking system. It um, it baffled Chris Illich, most importantly, and that's what I want. So, um, what else is there to say? T- 
Tigers lose to the last place Royals again. Four to two. Hey, um, pretty cool, huh? Yeah. The Tigers' uh, stupidity bites them in the asses, and they get what they deserve. So, um, we're just going to leave that there. Miguel Cabrera has now been placed on the 10-day disabled list with a, with a right hamstring strain. So, um, again, they, the Tigers should release him for nothing. They can't trade him. He's too expensive. They might as well eat the rest of his contract, eat up the rest of his contract money. It's a rebuilding year. Even if Miguel Cabrera was that good, the Tigers... The rest of the Tigers team isn't. So, sorry to disappoint Tiger fans, but they're not going to be con contender until 2021. Or even later. Probably not going to be a contender for a long time. Especially as long as Chris Illich still owns the Tigers as, as he does right now. So, uh, Saturday at 4.15 is game three of that series. Miguel Cabrera has been on the, on the DL before. He was on the 15 day disabled list at that time, two years ago. Now he's just on the 10 day DL. So there you go. That's all that, that I have for tonight. Now it's time for Louis's, Louis Tenor's National Sports Report. Louis, take it away. You got it. All right, we'll start off with the Diamond. And the Yankees pulled off a, a furious uh, finish against the Indians 7-6. to six. They uh, blew the lead in the eighth inning, took the lead in the bottom of the eighth. Two wild pitches uh, gave Cleveland the chance to tie it up in the top of the ninth, and the Yankees were on a, on a dunker in the bottom of the ninth, 7-6. to six. Chapman got the win, and Dango got the loss. What a game, what a game. Uh, wow. Top of the ninth, Dodgers are leading the Padres 4 nothing with a runner on a first and no one out, and I believe that... Um, there is a no hitter in the works, unless it's a typo. It's not. In the top of the eighth. Oh, by the way, uh, Mason, Mason is pitching, and Bellinger is at bat. Top of the eighth, mm -hmm. the Astros are having a steal day with the Diamondbacks. Eight nothing. Runner on second and two out. TJ McFarlane is pitching, and Garniel is at bat. Top of the sixth, the Athletics are beating the Orioles 4-1 to one with a runner of first and no one out. Pettit is pitching and Jones is at bat, and my colleagues in Washington are not happy. Bottom of the sixth, Angels uh, lead the Mariners 3-zip with uh, one out and nobody on. Richards is pitching and Burgess is batting. All the rest are final. The Nationals over the Phillies, 7-3. Gonzalez uh, got the win, and Hervieta got the loss. Rockies uh, over the Mets, 8-7, but they led 8-2. It's still my way in the game. Marquez got the win, Wheeler got the loss, and Davis got the save. It's a close one. Reds over the Fish, you call the Marlins, 4-1. Uh, Romano got the win, Chen got the loss, and Iglesias got the save. The Rays of the Blue Jays, 6-2. Yarborough got the win, Hap got the loss. Giants over the Braves, 9-4. to 
Stratton got the win, and Bolzewitz got the loss. Well, the Rays have to lose once in a while. Red Sox over the Rangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five to one. Porcello Porcel got the win. Cologne got the loss. Just by a rotten luck. Pirates finally got back in the winning track with a 6 4 win over the, over the Brewers. Uh, Wingham got the win. Guerrero got the loss. And the Squallions got the save. Twins of the White Sox, 6 4. Barrios got the win. Fulmer got the loss. And Rodney got the save. They don't mean Dieterville. Uh, oh, okay. The. Cardinals over the Cubs, three to two. Uh, Nicholas got the win. Quintelia got the loss, and Boris got the save. Oh, and the Royals over the Tigers, four to two. Boyer got the win. Stumpf got the loss, and Hernia got the save. All right. Oh yeah, baby. So now, yeah. So now we'll check the standings, and they read like this. Now, unfortunately, the Red Sox are still in front in the American League East. But, uh, at 23-9. However, the Yankees, thanks for that uh, win tonight, 22-10, just one game back. I told you. The uh, Blue Jays are 5.5 back at 18-15. Rays, 14-16, 8 back, what a shock. And the Orioles in the basement at 8-23, and 14 and a half back, and could be worse than that before the game is over. Whew. All right, in the Central, Indians 17 and 15, thanks to that loss. Thank you. Uh, uh, the Tigers are three and a half back at 13 and 18. Twins 11 and 17 at four back. At seven back are the Royals at 10 and 22, and at seven back are the Chicago White Sox at nine and 21. Pathetic. Mm-hmm. West, AL, AL Company Central. Yeah. Angels, 19 and 12. Uh, and the Astros are 20 and 13. But the Angels are given the first place lead by percentage points as they lead, as they are 613, and the Astros are 606. So there's the reason why. Mariners are just a game, or a half game back at 18 and 12. Athletics, 15 and 16 at four back, and the Rangers are seven and a half back at 13 and 21. Over the National League, the surprising Braves, 19 and 12, still a game and a half ahead of the Mets, 17 and 13, or as I like to call them, the Mets. Uh, the Phillies, not too bad either, too bad at 17 and 14. Nationals, now back, now over 500 at 17 and 16, just three back, and the Marlins, 11 and 20, 8 back. Mm. Jeter, I know what you're doing this team. All right. In a close uh, central division for the most part, Cardinals are 18 and 12, have a half game lead over the Brewers at 19 and 14, a game and a half lead over the Cubs at 16 and 13, and a game and a half over the Pirates are 18 and 15, and the Reds. I hate to say this, but 11 back at 8 and 24. That's that's a a sin. Okay, the West. The D-backs, 21 and 10, have a four-game lead over the Rockies at 18 and 15. The Giants, 17 and 15, four and a half back. The Dodgers, 14 and 17, seven back. And the Padres, already 11, 21, 10 and a half back. My goodness. Yeah, when it rains, of course... All right, so, shall we check tomorrow's schedule? I should say now, later today, as the case may be. So, going into uh, May 5th, later today, schedule reads like this. Starting at 105, as the Indians take on my Yankees. 215, the Cubs take on the Cardinals. 405, the Phillies take on the Nationals. 415, your Tigers take on the Royals, that's a Fox Sports 1 game. Blue Jays will take on the Rays at 6-10. The Dodgers will take on the Padres at 7-10, also an FS1 game. I don't see why you put on national TV. Uh, 
Also, 710. We got a bunch of games at 710 here. I'll run them down as follows. Rockies will face, will face the Mets. Twins will face the White Sox. The Pirates will take on the Brewers. The Marlins will take on the Reds. Ugh, ugly. And the Giants will take on the Braves. 805, Red Sox will take on the Rangers. 810, Astros will take on the D-backs. 905, the Birds of Baltimore will take on the Athletics. And the Angels will take on the Mariners at 910. I know the Kobe Orioles. I just like to call them the Birds. I'm a Hitchcock fan, so, you know. All right. So, uh, yeah, let me turn to the ice now. Uh, the Lightning over the Brewers, uh, Bruins, it was 4-3 to three in overtime, take a 3-1 lead of the series. It was a very quick overtime. I was just about to go back to the game to see where we won the overtime, and it was already over. So, obviously, it lasted about two minutes. <laughs> and the Golden Knights are beating up on the Sharks, 3 to nothing. as we now head into the third period. Just to update on that quickly, because I'm sure we're now in that third period. And yes, we are. 13 21 to go in the third. It is still 3 to nothing. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, but this series is going to go seven games, so I'm not going to be. I'm not worried about if um, the Sharks lose this game uh, tonight. <laughs> it's still, it's still going to go seven any way you slice it. All right, so tomorrow's games, which are both at night, uh, relay this the Penguins versus the Capitals at 7 o'clock. That's an NBC game. And the Jets will take on the Predators, or as I call them, the Yahoos at 9.30. That's on NBCSN. So, that's, that'll, be, that'll, that'll be, of course, an interesting series. So now we'll go on to the hardwood. And boy, have we got an upset tonight, folks. The Pelicans over the Warriors. We have this 119-100 to 100 in Game 3. I can't believe it. Clay Thompson... Not bad, 26 points, 7 rebounds, 1 assist. Anthony Davis, star of the game, 33 points, 18 rebounds, and 3 assists. And now take a surprising 2-1 lead. I did not see this coming whatsoever. Are any NBA fans as shocked at this as I am? <laughs> Just like that, nothing's going to surprise me. Oh, uh, one more thing before we go to the morning news. We have also uh, tomorrow's games. And they read as follows, just two games, as the Celtics will take on the Sixers at 5 o'clock. Hartford and Embiid will be your players to watch in that game. That's ESPN. And at 8 o'clock, yes, 8.30, excuse me, the Raptors will take on the Cavaliers. DeRozan and James, of course, are the players to watch in that game, and I'll be on ABC. Um... Both series um, are 2 nothing leads. As Boston leads their series, 2 nothing against the Sixers. And the Cavaliers are leading the Raptors 2 nothing in their series. Kind of surprising, when you ask me. I just thought that, you know, that 76ers, I mean, the Raptors were going to roll over them. Okay, not the case. All right, uh, before I go to anything else, i like to bring up an MLS uh, soccer game. Uh, yes, I cover that too, folks. As the Toronto Football Club shuts out Philadelphia Union 3 to zip. <laughs> no figure. And of course, being Saturday is a big day in soccer, so I'll run these scores. I'll run the schedule down here. Leading off at 1 o'clock tomorrow, the Montreal Impact take on the New England Revolution. I can't stand them. Uh, for obvious reasons. The Battle of New York tomorrow, just before 2 o'clock, as the Red Bulls take on New York Football Club. I'm a Red Bulls fan myself. So, uh, 2 o'clock, Minnesota uh, Football Club will take on the Vancouver Whitecaps. At 3.55, the LA Football Club will take on Dallas. 4 o'clock, Seattle will take on Columbus. At 8.30, Chicago Fire will take on Atlanta United FC. I don't mean Chicago Fire, the TV series, either. 8.30, U.S. 
Houston Dynamo will take on the LA Galaxy. Also, 8.30, Kansas City will take on the Colorado Rapids. And at 10.30, the San Jose Earthquakes will take on the Portland Timbers. San Jose was one of the original teams in the MLS when it started 22 years ago. Oh my god, my god. Ugh. War is the pity. All right, uh, I got some interesting uh, baseball news I to mention. And I think that some of you might be aware of this. Uh, Albert Pujols becomes just the fourth hitter with 3,000 hits and 600 home runs. The easy thing is, he was once an obscure 13-round draft pick out of Maple Woods Community College in Kansas City, Missouri, who almost didn't sign a professional contract. Now, he is the 32nd member of the 3,000-hit club. After lining out his first at-bat, walking in his second play appearance, uh, Earlier tonight, or now last night, at Seattle's Safeco Field, Pujols singled a soft liner to right field with two outs in the fifth inning off Mariner starter Mike Leake. Pujols joins Henry Aaron, okay, Hank Aaron, Say Hey K. Willie Mays, and Alex Rodriguez in the 3,000 hit and 600 home run club further softlining his reputation as one of the best hitters of all time. He is the fourth is okay, he is the fourth player in four seasons to reach three thousand hits after A Rod did in twenty fifteen. Ichigo Suzuki in twenty sixteen and Adrian Beltrain last season. Pujols and Beltre are the only Dominican born players to reach that milestone. Pujols' trick to 3,000 has slowed in recent years, but his first 10 seasons with the Cardinals were one of the greatest decades ever for a batter. He hit 331 while averaging 41 home runs, 123 RBIs, and 190 hits. Nice. He won three MVPs and finished second in the voting four other times. The path to stardom almost didn't happen, at least not with the Cardinals, when the Cardinals drafted the Stockley shortstop at the 402nd pick in the 99 draft. They initially offered a signing bonus of $10,000. Pujols declined to sign and played the summer for the Hayes Larks of the amateur Jayhawk League. The Cardinals finally uh, relented and signed Pujols for a bonus close to, oh, uh, $60,000. He needed just one season and 127 games in the minors to reach the majors, breaking camp with the Cardinals in 2001 and starting at left field on opening day. He got his first hit that day off Mike Hampton of the Colorado Rockies and recently reminisced about the game with ESPN's Jerry Kranzak. So it's been it's been quite a journey. So uh, congrats, congratulations, Big Al. All right. So on uh, to other news of the day. I just let me type that in here. Okay. Yeah, six hundred six hundred links. That's that's quite a milestone, though. All right. The New York Mets announced um, yesterday that they will designate pitcher Matt Harvey for assignment, making an abrupt. Abrupt end to a tenure of a pitcher who was considered one of the game's stars of the future upon his 2012 arrival. Best general manager Sandy Allison said the team made the decision after Harvey refused a demotion to the minor league to work out his issues. Uh, the Mets recently moved Harvey to the bullpen where he has struggled in the transition and allowed five runs in an 11-0 thrashing on Thursday against the Braves at City Field. The move will come official later today. The Mets now have seven days to either dump, uh, trade, or release Harvey, and to find a new team as a free agent. Dump us to harsh words. But you get the general idea. Former Kansas City Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson has come to terms in signing a deal with the Oakland Raiders. 
according to multiple reports. The move was first reported by the NFL Network. The Chiefs announced back on February 13th they would not re-sign Johnson to a team that he has played for the last 13 seasons, Johnson said, Johnson said in a statement that he plans to play in the league for several years to come. Johnson had lost some playing time last season after the Chiefs had acquired two younger linebackers, Reggie Ragland and Kevin Pierre Lewis. Kevin Pierre. Okay. Wise guy. All right, the Dallas Stars have announced today that Jim Montgomery will become the next head coach of the Stars, becoming the second coach in three years to go from the college ranks to the NHL. Montgomery spent five seasons at the University of Denver and won a national title as a coach in the 2016-2017 season. As a player, he was part of the national championship at Maine back in 1993. Come on, that old. Uh, before uh, Denver, Montgomery spent three years in the United States Hockey League for the Fighting Stars of uh, Duquesne, winning two league titles. So he has the experience. And he's now at 48 years old. Jose Bautista has been called up for the minors and was in the Braves starting lineup at third base uh, last night when the team began their three-game series against the Giants at Sun Trust, Trust Park. A source told ESPN confirming multiple reports Bautista went unsigned as a free agent uh, the entire offseason before agreeing to a minor league deal on April 18th. That will pay him a base salary of $1 million in the majors. He'll play a first base for the Braves, despite the fact he has been playing as an outfielder since 2011. Well, sometimes change is good, though. All right, continuing on. The Carolina Panthers announced today that Wednesday's resignation of defensive backs coach Curtis Fuller uh, came amid complaints of workplace misconduct. The resignation occurred while the NFL continues to investigate team owner Jerry Richardson for sexual harassment as well as misconduct in the workplace. Fuller's conduct towards uh, women was considered inappropriate, according to a source. After approaching Coach Four with the findings of an investigation into complaints over his conduct, we accept his resignation. Uh, team spokesman Steve Drummond said in a statement, "The Panthers are deeply committed to ensure a safe, comfortable, and diverse work environment for all individuals, regardless of race, color, gender, religion, or sexual." identity, etc., etc., are treated fairly and equally. Fuller's resignation comes a week after at least three women said they were harassed by Richardson, called out the team owner, the organization, uh, Coach Ron Rivera. At the NFL, through letters printed by Sports Illustrated, the woman who called the NFL investigation into Richardson a uh, farce. The, Pan the Panthers responded with a statement about, about trying to create a workplace environment in which our staff can still feel proud to work. Yeah, good luck with that one, buddy. All right. Uh, continuing on here, Coach uh, Cavaliers coach Tyron Liu, uh won a battle of wits, uh, wills between him and Kevin Love over what position the big man would play in the Eastern Conference semifinals against the Raptors. And then Love, as the starting center, 
helped the Cavaliers prevail over the Sixers in Thursday night's game two. Uh, he scored 31 points. Between us, there is a there is obviously a mutual respect. Love, who had Bobby as a, or a power forward, said the relationship with Coach Lou, after falling just one point short of his career playoff, scoring high, he was helped. He has helped me so much as I sit here with the Cavaliers in the past four years. However, sometimes you're going to butt heads. Uh, and I mean, my entire life and career, and this will be my 10th year, I have spent the majority of my time at the four position and the power four position. But he sees something out there in me at the five spot, I assume, especially on the offense, offensive end, when I have my game going and wants to take and wants me to take full advantage of that. So I can't say I blame him. Alright. Uh, just a little bit more here. Okay. Seventy sixers rookie Ben Simmons said he was overthinking on the court in a Thursday night's game, only scoring one point, that's right, one point in thirty one minutes of play. I think it mainly waited. I think it mainly waited to myself. Simmons said, failing to score a field goal for the first time in his pro career. Mentally, I was thinking too much overplay, which is usually free. I think obviously the Celtics had their own game plan. I know what the game. I know what the game plan is. I have to. I have to. I've got to play my game. The Celtics had knocked up 2 nothing in the series in the best of seven. It took a physical approach to Simmons. The Celtics uh, forced Simmons to turn the ball over five times and contained his drives. That limited him only to one point on seven drives to the basket. This according to the ESPN stats and information. It took... It took everybody. Uh, so these Marcus Stewart, Marcus Smart said, "We threw different matchups at him. We dictated what he wanted to do." Simmons thought that the Celtics' physical play did not bother him. Instead, that the struggles were self-inflicted. Oof, self-inflicted. Eh, that's a wound that can heal easily. Uh, I don't know. Oh, Self-infliction? That, that's that's pretty serious. That's barbaric. Uh, he'll get over it, though. It, it's no big deal. Uh, one note that we uh, didn't mention because um, this came in um, as we were up here last night. As the old saying goes, the rich get richer. Well, but the case involving, case in point, Falcons quarterback Matt Ryan, he will become the first quarterback to earn $30 million per season. The deal will guarantee him $100 million. Back when your sources, Ryan was entering the final year of his five-year contract extension in 2013. My question is, to everybody, is he really worth it? Uh, no. Especially after choking in the Super Bowl uh, last year. So, uh, I don't think it was worth it whatsoever. Give me a break. Him worth, him worth $100 million? Not a chance. <sighs> Give me a break. Okay, so we'll just go over some of the late-night baseball scores that are still going on at this point. And right now, in the bottom of the ninth, the Astros are still being up on Diamondbacks 8 uh, nothing. Diamondbacks actually just got a hit uh, with two out. Cole is pitching, and Dyson is batting. It seems to be a lost cause, though, at this point. Athletics are leading the Orioles by DeBoer. Ratch is pitching, and McCroy is at bat, and there's uh, two strikes and one one ball. No one on, no one out. And in the top of the seventh, the Angels are leading the Mariners 
three nothing with one out, nobody on. Uh, Goodell is pitching and Upton is batting. And all the rest, I believe, are final. Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> all right, so that concludes my notes for the scene. And, ooh, we got an update here. Oh, my goodness, you're not going to believe this. The Golden Knights now lead the San Jose Sharks 4-2, to 5-3 to go in the third. Ugh, By the way, uh, the, the the Los Angeles Dodgers had four pitchers throw a combined no-hitter against the Padres in Mexico now. Wow. I'm yep. bring the talk. Well, it's officially single tomorrow anyway, so uh, I'll, I'll, bring, I'll bring the Mexican beer. Oh, and one more update here. The Rockets are now leading the Jazz 98-74 with 7.24 to go in the fourth quarter. All right, that takes care of my notes. I'll hand it right back over to you. All right, thanks. Ed Smith is standing by. For Lewis Tenor, I'm Taylor Phillips. Follow me on Twitter at DT2Phillips. Like and share the Michigan Sports Truth Facebook page and follow it on Twitter at Michigan underscore truth. TTFN, ta-ta for now. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. Good night, folks. The hosts of the Michigan Sports Truth podcast do not take any suggestions or criticism from any member of its audience on how it should be run. It is up to the host to decide what they want to cover. They also do not intend to be any amount of popular in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Additionally, the views of the audience, right or wrong, do not reflect the actual truth revealed on this program. complete.